So, there are very few things. That's a lie. There are a lot of things. There are a lot of things that get me frustrated because I either don't understand them or I just get so caught up in things that I cannot even fathom the bigger picture. One of those things is poetry, especially the sonnet, and I would like to explain why in a sonnet. My mistress's eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. If snow be white, why then her breasts are done. If hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. I have seen roses damask red and white, but no such roses see I in her cheeks. And in some perfumes there is more delight than in the breath that from my mistress reeks. I love to hear her speak, yet I well know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. I grant I never saw a goddess go. My mistress, when she walks, treads on the ground. And yet, by heaven, I think my love is rare, as any she belied with false compare. So, that's Shakespeare, Sonnet 130. Why am I using a sonnet to describe a form that frustrates me? Well, it's all in iambic pentameter. And iambic pentameter really is one of those things that just, like, makes me a ball of frustration and tear my hair out and, you know, throw my hands up in surrender to the fact that I will never be good at iambic pentameter. And why is this? Because I always put stress on the wrong syllables. Well, there's lots of books on sonnets, books of sonnets, books about structure of sonnets, and the problem being for me that there are three different types of sonnets. You have the Petrarchian sonnet, which is often used, the Shakespearean sonnet, or the English sonnet, which is used just as frequently, and then you've got the Spenserian sonnet which is not that common, but it's used. So I'm going to quickly describe these three types of sonnets. So a Petrarchan sonnet consists of two quatrains and a sestet, and the quatrains make up eight lines of something really weighty, and the sestet, like that end, it is the part that kind of resolves things or releases things. So your Shakespearean or English sonnet consists of three quatrains, and it is different in rhyme scheme, and it's different in the stress. The way that it works out is that the last two lines, 13 and 14, are a rhyming couplet that sort of make the turn and resolve whatever has been um, created in the three quatrains previous. And the Spenserian sonnet is essentially the um, same thing as a Shakespearean sonnet, but the rhyming overlaps to try and make the whole quatrain thing tighter, and it's, I don't know, the, the differences are so small. How does this all tie into iambic pentameter? Well, an iambic unit is made up of an unstressed and a stressed syllable, and iambic pentameter is ten syllables, so five of these units. Well, this is how sonnets are structured, and it doesn't matter what kind of sonnet it is, and Shakespeare and Milton and the lot were masters at it, and I am not. I am very obviously not good at the sonnet. Knowing that I am horrible at writing sonnets, given that I've tried quite a few times and failed epically, um, I would just like to say that I am not against the sonnet. I quite like Shakespeare's sonnets. There are many great authors who have sonnets. I will just never be a poet.